crazy little bugger. Okay. So now we do this and we copy and then we go into Dropbox and we go into the map section. Oh, frickety frackety frock. Well, that's lame. I need to fix some of these naming conventions. Hell, we'll just fix them this way. Thumb. Thumb. Sweet. Copy. Paste. Excellent. And now we go to here. And we go to here. We go into the D&D &D section. We go into the map section. And we just drag and drop. And we overwrite everything. This will take a little while because we're uploading all these files. Um, in the meantime, let's start talking about gnomes, okay? Let's start talking about gnomes. And this is how I plan my D&D &D campaigns. Well, at least the ones I do with you guys. If I do it by myself, I don't use Notepad. I actually use a piece of paper. Um, so, main bad guy is evil, evil gnome. I was going to say evil scientist gnome or evil e genius gnome, but whatever. Evil gnome. He will be an evil genius, though, which would be perfect. Uh, no, not roleplay. This is for... Where is Age of Might? Hmm. So... Weapon of choice, death laser, with a Z. We're doing laser with a Z, guys, because this is going to be a fun section, a fun campaign. Ah, and let's double check the map, because the map, whoops, should be updated by now. Okay, looks solid, looks solid, looks solid. Oh, 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 and here's what we've done, guys. And look at that, we are missing a river. Awesome. Okay, let's quickly go back and fix the river. Uh, what are you? You are three comma two. We're three comma two. Yeah. Let's. Lovely. And where's three comma one? Flatten, copy, and close. Copy and close without saving. And V and 50% and image rotation, no. Edit, transform, flip vertical. And zooming in to the lakes and water. And we actually need to open up our palette and steal the light water. And uh, we need to make ourselves a river, which will actually follow a very similar path and just go right there. Then if we get rid of you and do this, Cool. Now we'll go in closer to you. Oops. Something like that. And now we grab this watercolor and we do it that way. Screw it. Let's just brush over it all. Done. Now we save you. 
And now we save you as a PNG. And now we flatten and change you to 450 and save you as a JPEG in 450. And now we undo the flatten and redo it at 225 and save you as a JPEG in 225. I'm going to do and undo. And we save here. Good. Now we can close that. Do I have a behind the screen overlay? I don't. It's okay. I should get one at some point though. Um, sweet, and we'll just repeat the exact same process we did before. Excellent. Uh, where were we? Evil Gnome. Here we go. Weapon of choice is a death laser. My mods are supposed to catch that. Mods, you missed Pochi TV. Bad mod. Why do I look so familiar? I don't know. Have you seen me from roleplay before? Maybe you went to school in Santa Barbara. I don't know. Okay, so Okay, where were we guys? Wait a minute. Okay, weapon um, of choice, death laser. So what is his motivation? Motivation, evil gnome wants to see the world burn. Okay, but let's, do you want to go deeper than that? No, we're going to make it super simple. Mentally, how the hell do you spell deranged? Deranged. Ooh, actually, I search deranged and I get deranged sorority girl email from Google. What the hell is this? This is from a few months ago? What the hell's going on here? Tipster four to six. What? I, I don't I don't care. I'm sorry, I don't care. 
I just wanted to learn how to le pick up, spell the word deranged, and I spelled it right. I don't know why I keep reading about this stuff. Mentally deranged. Okay. Um, so he's just crazy, dude. He's a, he's a fucking crazy gnome. We should come up with some silly backstory, though. If the if the players somehow delve deeper, there should be a somewhat of a reason, some like minor thing that sent him off a path of destruction. Maybe his ears are too big. People made fun of how big his ears were, and and so he lost it. Done. Again, we're not doing a serious campaign. We're doing a fun campaign. Um, location. Splash. Mountain. So, here is how I plan things to go down. Um, the party is currently in Steel Home. They're going to take off soon. Oh, why did this one image not update? Oh, I think it just needs to refresh the page. There we go. Yeah, now I'm sure it'll be fine. And this one should also be fine now. Yeah. Cool, let's refresh everything. Well, what the hell? Refresh, damn it. I want you to fix. There we go. Oh, that's weird. So one of them got fixed, but not the others. But I think it's just like a cache clearing issue. Whatever, it's fine. Um, so the, the party's currently in Steel Home, and they need to head to Splash Mountain, which is actually way too far away. Splash Mountain should have been much, much closer, but it's fine. It's fine, guys. Um, So, so here's the deal. They're headed back to Fort Redbeard because the whole quest to steal home started with, oh my God, we're going to have this dinner. We're, like, we're going to throw a fancy dinner party. So they get to ba back to Fort Redbeard. They report back, explain everything that happened. They go through the dinner party. The next morning, no, we'll have, make it even more fun. During the dinner party, from Splash Mountain, a giant laser beam comes down and like slices through Fort Redbeard. Just goes, like burns down the walls. A couple people die, you know, damages the building, and everyone's like running around going, ah. Uh, eventually, yeah, that's, that's mid dinner. They get back out, or they they go out and like, what the fuck happened? And people are like, holy shit, this red light came from Splash Mountain and just like burned all these people and look at the dead dead people, blah, 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 blah. And the general's like, holy shit, because they're, they're at the din dinner for the general's daughter, who one of the characters is engaged to. Mike, the elven fighter, is engaged to the general Redbeard's daughter. So, laser beam comes through. General Redbeard is like, holy shit, what the fuck is that? Looks at the party, says, hey, you guys want to go take a look? And the party's like, we got this shit. Hopefully. If the party doesn't go after it, I don't know what to do. I'll, I'll wing something to encourage them gently. But this party's actually really chill about hopping onto missions. Um, okay, so let's write that down so we don't forget. Dinner back at Fort Redbeard. 
laser beam. Yes, we're spelling beam. We're spelling with a Z because it's the death laser of the gnome. I understand it's actually spelled with an S. Don't give me shit for that. Laser beam sweeps through the fort, killing some folks and destroying this. That's not how you spell, but that's okay. Some buildings. Um, people saw the light come from Splash Mountain and the general they should capitalize that the general asks the party to investigate if the party refuses whoops investigate if the party refuses he sends his own own men who don't return so he sends the party again cool so he's gonna send the party if they refuse he sends his own guys his own guys never come back um and that's that so it'll take them a while to get to splash mountain that's a what, one day journey to caldera one and a half day journey to caldera and then like a two or three day journey to splash mountain maybe two day journey two day journey to splash mountain um, on the way to Splash Mountain, what other things has this? Does this maniacal gnome have? Should this just be like a one, like a completely self-contained episode, like a one-shot episode, or should it be a two or three session campaign? Or it could be like an epic campaign that's like it goes on and on and on. No. I think like a two or three day campaign would be good. No, I don't want Caldera to be destroyed, but Caldera should be fucked up. Um, Caldera's fucked up. And then what happens? And then... So the party goes to Splash Mountain. What sort of things will they face on the way? Also, how much damage does a death laser do? Okay, weapon of choice, death laser. Or saver's breath weapon for half. Cool. Sounds like right. That sounds right. Um, so they head out to Kel to Splash Mountain. Why doesn't the gnome just see them coming and burn them alive? Oh, because he doesn't have any fucking focus. He's not very good with it yet. So he's kind of like... Uh, mechanical battle chickens? Yes. Yes. He has also built a small army of mechanical battle chickens. That is the greatest. Um, so you can't really, no, you, fuck, you can kill the mechanical battle chickens with piercing weapons. Uh, how much life does a mechanical battle chicken have? I'm going to say a mechanical battle chicken has 2d8 HP. Uh, weapon speed two, movement speed 
eight. They're pretty fucking fast. Uh, attack type is piercing. Damage is... D3. Yeah? No, D3 is 2. D4 damage for a battle chicken. I mean, it's just like pecking at you, but it's mechanical. It's got like iron beaks that like bite and snap at you. D6 damage for a battle chicken. Uh, they're only, you know... How tall is a normal chicken? How how tall is a normal chicken? What is the average height of a chicken? Space under the house is 34 inches high, and my first cycle of hens were bar blah blah blah. I think two inches might be cutting it. Oh, you're talking about building a freaking hut. How tall is a freaking chicken? Guys, how tall is a chicken? 10 to 16 inches. Where are you getting these numbers from? Are you just making this shit up? I, I don't want you guys to just make this shit up. Ten to fifteen inches tall is what the internet is telling me. Um, no, which can stand between twelve to eighteen inches tall. Okay, so we're gonna just say a foot and a half to make things easy. Foot and a half. Okay, guys, I'm starving. I'm gonna go grab some pizza and be. I'm gonna run a like a one minute commercial because I'm actually dying of hunger. I'm literally dying of hunger. So I'm going to bring some pizza and be right back, okay? Mmm. Cold pizza. I love it. All right, so mechanical battle chickens. That's where we left off, right, guys? We left off with the ba mechanical battle chickens. So, 
So, what else does he have as weapons, other than just mechanical battle chickens? Eighteen inches is a foot and a half. Mechanical bears, mini rockster goblins, explosive animals. I think I think there should be a giant mechanical bear as well. The evil mecha bear will be like a sub boss or something. And he's going to have hmm, Eight D eight hit points, weapon speed six, but he gets two attacks, one for each claw. Um, movement speed sixteen. He's a fast fucker. Attack type is slashing. Damage is. I think each claw should do like two D six damage. Because he's got razor claws, right? Yeah. And he stands... I don't know. These are each like 10 pounds, and he's probably... He's a mechanical bear, so... You know, four feet at the shoulder, and size of... Grizz... Brown bear. Size of a brown bear. Cool. Laser claws, laser vision. Hmm. Now hold on. Do we want? All right, guys. Here, here's the better question. Do we want this to be like an evil mecha bear, or do we want this to be like, um? like a, a mechanical bear that he's like inside controlling, like fighting from. Because if he's like inside a bear, like controlling with joysticks and stuff, kind of like a, like a Gundam, then you could actually, you know, he could have all sorts of cool things and he could be like the final boss. He could have like a flamethrower breath and like laser eyes, like shitty laser eyes that malfunction and then like razor claws that he normally attacks with. He's totally riding inside the evil mecha bear. Okay. All right, so this is sweet. Um, weapon speed six, attack type slash, da 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 da. Okay. He only gets three flame breaths total before he has to like recharge the the gas on him. So three attacks with it. It is AOE. I want to say eight feet wide. He can breathe fire like that. So um, eight feet long, 120 degree arc. Uh, the damage is for fire breath. I want to say 44 damage. Save versus breath weapon for half. And then what else does he have? He has a laser eyes. Okay. 
which have 50% malfunction rate. And it does... Oh, weapon speed for this is... what? What's the weapon speed for fire breath? Probably higher, like 8. Um, laser eyes have weapon speed... Three and damage each eye should do like d8 damage, so it'll be damage 2d8. Um, 10% chance they backfire and explode for d10 damage. And so, since he's the final boss, we'll up his HP a bunch. So he'll be 12 D8 HP. <laughs> the hell is this? It's a gnome with a mecha bear and some mechanical chickens and Splash Mountain. <laughs> That's hilarious. He doesn't need a jetpack, no. No jetpacks. No, no. He's just a normal mechanical bear that <laughs> with a gnome inside of him. <laughs> no flying, no jetpacks, no rocket jump. This is good. Okay, so here's the deal. When the party leaves Caldera and is on their way to Splash Mountain, the gnome gets like his um, telescopic eye thingy, his spyglass. He sees the party coming, so he unleashes a horde of mechanical battle chicken or ro robot. What do we call them? What was the term we call them? Mechanical battle chicken. So he leases unleashes a horde of mechanical battle chickens at the party, and they all come up and start pecking at the party, right? Which is great. I love that image. Mm. The party hopefully defeats them and continues to Splash Mountain. The gnome, seeing his me mechanical battle chickens defeated, then does what? What does he do as his next level defense? Because his final defense is the bear. What's his secondary defense after his mechanical battle chickens have been defeated? Well, no. Laser is first order of defense, right? But he can't aim it at such a small target as people. Mm. I kind of want to do something non-mechanical. What else could an evil gnome have? He couldn't have shit. No, he's only got mechanical stuff. He doesn't have any magic. So... Hmm. Maybe he should send out like a clockwork juggernaut or something that's like this giant, imposing, terribly horrible, fearful thing, but it's got like all these clockwork gears, so you just have to like put something in it and it like grinds to a halt. I think that's what he's going to do. I think it's going to be like a clockwork juggernaut that sounds fearsome but was poorly thought out because all of his like 
gears and mechanics are on the outside. And so you just need to put like a rock in and then the gears like and the entire thing just kind of stops. I think that's that's what it should be. How do you spell juggernaut? N A U T. Okay, cool. N A U T. No G. Okay, yeah, yeah. Juggernaut. Sweet. Clockwork juggernaut. H P. Um, we're just gonna put him at 100, 200 H P. Weapon speed. Twenty. Super fucking slow. Uh, attack type is bludgeoning. He <laughs> with his fists. Oh, these guys need Thacko and shit, and they need armor class. What's the AC of a mechanical battle chicken? It should be like fifteen. And hit bonus is plus three to hit. Now let's do a little higher. Plus plus five to hit. Plus four to hit. And with the claws, it is um, AC 19 plus 7 to hit. Okay. The party's like fourth or fifth level. Fourth level. <laughs> um, attack type B. AC. Should be relatively low AC. So AC 12. Um, weapon speed's super high. Bonus to hit is pretty low. He's got bad aim. So plus three to hit. He's worse than the chickens. But his damage is, you know, two, 2d12 damage. It's a lot of damage. Well, don't high ver I do want high variability for the damage. Oh, because he could like, you know, smash down for a bunch, or he could like swipe from the side, and you kind of just get like knocked away, but without actually getting hurt that much. Hmm. Gears exposed is his weakness. Should be really easy to figure out, but we we'll often drink a lot and are joking around a lot. And you guys, it's pretty clearly clear that you just need to put something in to stop it. But when you're actually in game, if you say like mechanical clockwork juggernaut with gears everywhere, you might not instantly think, "Hey, let's put a fucking rock in the gears." You know, that might not come to mind immediately. So. This is nice. Max damage 40 would kill most of the people instantly. The party has not well, ro rolled well for HP. They've rolled very poorly. Mm.
Hmm. He's powered by something. Don't worry about it. It's fucking D and D. We're not going to worry about what he's powered by or how he gets his orders or how he's sentient. Like, if we have sentient mechanical battle chickens that are, I mean, don't worry about the power source, guys. Some sort of semi-magical shit. Don't worry about it. Okay, so. So let's recap what's going on. Party leaves Fort Redbeard. Probably steps by Caldera. Caldera is pretty fucked up. Laser beams have crisscrossed the place. The ships are on fire. Whatever. Part's like, fuck, we need to get to Splash Mountain. They take off. On their way, mechanical battle chickens run, and they fight the mechanical battle chickens. How many? Like 20? 20 sounds like a lot. Maybe we shouldn't do 20. Maybe we should do like 15. Okay. Um... Right. <clears throat> they can see them running. All right, after the party defeats the mechanical chickens, they keep coming. The gnome lets out like a ah! you know, horrible cry with frustration and sends his juggernaut after the party. So the Juggernaut starts coming. The party hopefully defeats the Juggernaut. Yeah, they'll, hopefully, whatever. In the event that the party defeats the Juggernaut, the Gnome is very frustrated. His All his weapons have failed him. And the party will eventually get to Splash Mountain. Once in Splash Mountain, the party must face... What? How does the party... Where's the entrance? Where's the entrance? I want, like, it could be behind the waterfall, but that's super fucking cliche. And I kind of want to save that cliche for something else. Also, mechanical chickens and juggernaut wood gets fucked over by the waterfall. So, there is, like, a large entrance to the cave, to Splash Mountain. Okay. At Splash Mountain, you can't have a mechanical waterfall. Don't be ridiculous. What happens at Splash Mountain? What happens at Splash Mountain? I don't know what to do once they get there.
there should be something non-combat. Because currently we have like two battles pretty much back to back. And that's kind of intense. You know, there should be something that breaks up the battles. Hmm. We need something in between the mechanical battle chickens and the evil, no, the clockwork juggernaut, okay? What, what breaks, what splits in between those two? Mm. All right, here's what happens. Here's what happens. Um, the next day, a band of gully dwarves, the gnomes assistants, uh, So, the, so a bunch of gully dwarves come up to the party and be like, go away, you're not supposed to be here, blah, blah, blah. Party interacts with them. Gully dwarves go home. Clockwork Juggernaut attacks the next day. Well, later that day. Cool. Hmm... At Splash Mountain, now he should also be like twenty-five feet tall. You know, huge, ten feet wide, five feet deep, red glowing. Eye. Well, fuck, we don't need that. Five feet deep. Okay, cool. At Splash Mountain, they get there and. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'll upload the Q and A. What the hell? Oh, okay. Okay, highlighting the Q&A right now on Twitch. Highlighted, uploading the thing to, whatchamacallit, uploading to YouTube. Okay, so if you want to watch the Q&A, just go to my highlighted section, and you should be fine. All right, so the party gets to Splash Mountain. There is something outside. There's a big fucking door.
So this big fucking door that's wide open because the juggernaut came through. And like above it, there's the words mechanical beast entry exit only. People use other door. And then there's um, with there's like an arrow pointing down, you go over there and like there's another door. Uh, now here's the deal. The other door is trapped and it's just a series of like dangerous complicated traps. But the mechanical beast door, totally fine. You walk right in and you go to like the laboratory at the bot, which is at the base of the mountain. And then there's like the other laboratory that's at the top of the mountain. And there's just like, you know, some sort of, I don't want to rip too much off of Dragonlance. So I'm not going to use the catapults from Mount Nevermind, but um, we'll say there's just like a ladder or, or a, what do you call it? Like a, a, a bucket system, you know, where there's buckets on ropes and they just kind of go in circle like a, like a giant water wheel. Oh yeah, you ride a water wheel. Oh, that's so cool. That's how you get to up and down. There's a giant fucking water wheel inside and the water like splashes in these things, which like lowers, but there's like little compartments underneath that you can hide in. And so you don't get like splashed on by the water. And then we have a constantly moving, like, like a fucking Ferris wheel to get around. That's so sweet. Okay. Oh, right. Inside the mecha door is a tunnel leading to a lab. The lab has a water wheel that is powered by the waterfall and has small compartments for traveling. Uh, Exit on the top by the death laser lab. Cool. Um, the other door, however, has, um, is trapped with explosives if a key is not used. 2d8 damage to all within 20 10 feet um save versus breath weapon for half okay and if you go within that then it's just gonna be like a series of like semi-functioning traps and stuff uh, you know, so tunnel leading to, oh no, stairway, lots of, lots of traps, mm, plus Forty percent to detect traps. Um, so there are lots of traps, but they're all kind of poorly disguised. So there'll be like a, a fucking crossbow that you'll see on the wall, like mounted at you. And you're like, "Well, there's a crossbow there." Uh, oh, look, there's a the wire. Done. So plus forty percent to detect traps, detect and remove, because they're pretty fucking obvious. Um, but there's a lot of them. So we'll have crossbow trap, uh, single target, D8 damage. And we'll have, you know, mm, pit trap drops 10 feet. See, for a gnome, a 10-foot drop would be devastating, you know? That'd be like 2d6 falling damage for a fucking gnome, but for a person, it's not that bad. You know, it's like d6, You're like, ow! And then you, like, climb out with the help of your friends. It's not that big of a deal. Pit drop. Drops 10 feet. Done. And we'll have... 
What other types of traps should we have? A I want to do some sort of fire trap. How do you have like a semi-obvious fire trap? Um Oh, here we go. He's going to like try and outthink the players by having a table with a potions sitting on it with the words do not drink this. And if you drink it, it's like poison. You take 2d4 poison damage from drinking it. Onset time five minutes. Save versus poison for puking and shit for a while. So if you pass your save versus poison, you just want like, bleh, you know, puking and being disgusting. If you fail your, your save, you take 2d4 damage. But it's just like a table with like a potion sitting on it. It says, do not drink this. You know, he's trying to outthink the, the whoever might be sneaking into his area. Super Clevin. Mm. And what other traps can we do? What else can we do, guys? Yes, but what does a tripwire do? Obvious tripwire that fires shots out of holes in the walls? What sort of shots? I mean, we already have like a cross, like, I don't need to know the mechanism of the trap. I want to know like the, the weapon of the trap. So like a crossbow is probably a tripwire trap. But the idea is that it's like this visible crossbow that's like sitting somewhere aimed at you. Uh, What sort of fire though? How how would you get the fire to work? Yeah, he'll definitely explain his whole plan to the party before the battle begins. Absolutely. Oh, pressure plate that drops a cage? Oh, that's brilliant. So it's a cage sized for dwarves, and it weighs like 150 pounds. So it's this cage that like drops, because you know he's a gnome. He's doesn't always. He's a, a crazy semi deranged gnome, and he's like, well, we'll build this cage, and it's perfect for a person. But then you know, if you think about a human target, you'd need a little bit larger of a cage, so you could still fit a person in it. Just like if you put, you know, a human-sized cage would fit something that's taller than a human. It would, they'd just have to, like, lean over or something. Um, let's bring up, bump up its weight a little bit. 200 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an electric cage. Okay. Mechanical and beautiful. Oh, God, that's a nice book. Beautiful. Oh, fuck it.
So mechanical, but beautiful Namish woman. Um, you know, beautiful clothing, big bust, lovely hair for a gnome and everything, uh, and a decent, like, fake face. Um, Alcove has... Uh, where she breathes toxic gas onto people. However, as a gnome, she's only like, you know, two feet tall. So there's this gnome that's like alluring and the people will just kind of like walk past it and be like, oh. And then if she even tries to breathe toxic gas at them, most of the party, except for the dwarf in the party, will be way too tall to even like be affected. They can just like step back and be like, what the fuck was that shit? Keep going. Um, one more trap, one more trap. Bomb in the center of the room, but it has no trigger. It can only be detonated by a person attempting to disarm it. That's brilliant. Maxiv77, you are fucking genius. Should be a lot of damage though. Twenty D four though would kill the party, would kill everyone in the party. That's still gonna kill most of the people in the party. That's twenty damage easily. Yeah, two D twenty is better. Um, so if you try to disarm it, so if a thief rolls their disarm check, you know, disarm trap check, it will explode. If they pass the disarm trap check, they look at it, they look around and they realize, holy shit, there's no way to set this thing off without, you know. Well, because if it's 20d20, the party's going to die instantly, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I like to at least give the party a chance to survive, even if they do stupid things. Um, And the last trap is going to be a rope with a note attached saying pull for elevator service. Um, dumps rocks on party. Next to large staircase. And you have to take the staircase to the top. No, fuck. You don't take the staircase to the top. You take this. Um, damn. Uh, two d ten damage. No. Two d eight damage from falling rocks. Dex check for to escape. Cool. Um, and there's also a water wheel here. Like the water wheel passes this location and then goes all the way to the top. At the top.
done. Campaign planned. All right, guys. Bell out of order, please knock. No. Perfect. I think this is perfect. So what's at the end? At the end, he takes the water wheel up to the gnome's laboratory, which has like uh, a telescope and then like this that he's aimed down at the ground and has like all these reflector beams and shit and these gems that like focus the light. No, it's like a telescope that he aims at the sun and then he uses the light that's gathered in there to like charge it into like focus it into this beam through these crystals and shit which form this red laser that goes and burns shit up. That's what he does. Uh, and he gets, when you get up there, you know, he's already in his, crawling into his mecha suit and then he's like, ah, oh, you... I will destroy you all for blah, 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 blah. And then the party, you know, defeats the mechanical bear. And that's GG. This is for my friends tonight. Yeah. We play at seven, although we have a new party member today. So we play it. So I have to be there before six to set that up. The party does have a healer. This will not be on any show that you see. Why is it a red laser? Because that's way cooler than any other color of laser for a D&D campaign. Hello. It's not being streamed and it never will be streamed. I will let you guys know what happens. Tomorrow I'll do like a short recap of what happens so you guys can figure it out. That's about it. Um, yeah. It's a red laser, guys, not a pink laser. I think that's it. We do need a name for the evil gnome. All right, guys, help me name this evil gnome. Grubnar. I like Grubnar. Well, that was fast. First name, bam. Grubnar is great. Grubnar the what? Not the defiler. Grubnar the... No, I haven't done any uploading. Grubnar the, the genius. That's his name. Grubnar the super intelligent gnome. No, because he introduces himself. I'm sorry, I didn't see your question, so I can't answer it if I didn't see it. And scrolling up, I don't see anything from you. So, sorry. Hey, you'll actually have a question now. It seems really hard for me to come up with situation tasks that are difficult enough to kill a party, but won't likely, like, surely kill them. How do you manage to keep the balance? How do you not create the weak, strong enemies all the time? Hard to find. Well, you just saw the process, right? Didn't you just watch us do this? So I gave the chickens, you know, chickens are moderately powerful. They're pretty on the weak side, but there's a lot of them. So it's dangerous, but it's not, you know, end of the world. It's probably a fairly easy battle. Clockwork Juggernaut will easily kill the party unless they think beyond it. You know, realize you can just stop it by putting like something in its gears. The evil mecha bear is actually super challenging, um, but fun because it's got multiple different attacks, and the laser eyes have a fifty percent, you know, chance to malfunction and explode. Um, if you join late, just I mean, we have a whole bunch of these behind the screen things. You can just watch the thought process for that. You know the. The how do you make enemies that aren't so strong they're going to kill your party but at least provide a challenge is one of the hard things about D&D. Depends on what system you're using. Some systems will give you monsters that are, you know, right for your party. But in general, just, you know, 
if you're having a hard time, run a simulation of the battle. Like, get your characters' character sheets out, and then put some guys against them, and then run the battle by yourself before the party's there. Um... Oh, we already made characters for one shots. In fact, so now basically we're done with cartography and behind the screen for the day. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish filling out the character sheets for one shots. I don't expect you guys to stick around because it's probably going to be, you know, a little on the less interesting side. It's definitely not evil gnome quality, uh, but it will be interesting. So if you want to stick around for that while we work on the one-shots character sheets, uh, I encourage you to, but don't feel, you know, it, it's going to be different. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, so let's just start filling these things out. Specialized fighter 16 strength is plus 2, plus 4, critical hit adjust is Eight, four, base hold, 75, 375, whoop. 375 max lift is 450. Dodge is plus, plus three, minus 113. 14 athletics, seven, 14, zero. 13 endurance is D8, 0, 0, minus 11. Coordination, 0, 0. Willpower, 0, 9. Doesn't matter. 9 memory. Uh, you're not a spellcaster, so it doesn't matter, and you don't get charm resist. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Morale boost. 15 Charisma is plus 3, plus 3. Surprise check is 7, 2, minus 2. And your base resistances are 5, 8, 2, 6, 6, 5, 7, 6, 7. And your mental AC is 9. Oh, hold on, I didn't pick a race for you guys. All right, the specialized... Oh, man, I, I like playing humans a lot. But I think the d no or the, the only non-human member of the party was the thief, so we definitely need to bring some non-humans in here. So we're going to have a an elven specialized fighter. So the elf is the, like, wishy-washy... Oh, I'm really good with the sword, but... I'm an elf, so I do blah, 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 and blah, 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 and whatnot. Cool. So let's pick up the races table. Um, no. Where the hell? Oh, it's the old. That's the old races. This is the new races. Here we go. So elves get plus two perception. No, I want him to have super low perception. Fuck that. I liked the five perception. That's what, whatever. He's an elf. Seven perception. Plus one incarnation brings that to 13. Minus one to endurance brings that to 12. Plus 10 charm resist brings that to 17. Mind reading plus four brings that to 10. Uh, psychic resist? Oh, that's mental AC. Uh, that's going to bring us to 13. I changed the names around a lot. Uh, you dropped to 6. You dropped to 4. You dropped to 1. Blah, 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 blah. They take 30 more, 30% 30 more EXP. I think that's bullshit. I think they should take 40. No, 30 is okay. 35. We'll call it 35. So your current XP is 0. You need... Normally you need 2,000, but since you need 35% more, that would be, what, 60, 2,700 to get to the next level. You are an elf. You are a specialized fighter. Uh, we don't care about alignment. Hair, long, golden. Long and golden. 
Eyes will be light blue. Height and weight, you're going to be 5, 8, 1. You're an elf, so you should be on the light side. 130 LB, level 1. Character name for the elf will be... Um, Halfed. Whoops. Halfed. The half of the half of the charmer. Because that's his point. He's kind of like a you know, I don't want to say womanizing, but definitely like a fan of the ladies. Uh, first level, so he gets D eight HP. Ooh, eight HP. Well done. <laughs> Um, attack adjustments, zero, zero, I guess. Natural AC is 13, no armor, total eight is 13. Base encumbrance is what, 75, which means this is 150, which means this is 225, which means this is 300, which means this is 375. Yeah. Sweet. And you're going to use a long sword, one handed. Uh, oh, and since you are, where's the classes? You are specialized. So you just get plus one to damage. You don't get a plus one to hit until second level, but you do get a bonus of one to initiative, so it's going to be four instead of five, right? Where's the, where's my books? Where's my books? All right, let's take a look. Let's look at the books. How much does a long sword normally take? Long sword, normally it's five. You get a bonus of one to initiative, so it's four. With your long sword. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, you're really only proficient in long sword and knife. So his equipment will be his long sword, which weighs, I just put it away, I think it's five, four pounds. Four pounds for longsword. Yep. Uh, he's gonna have a knife, not knife, which weighs one pound. He's gonna have clothes, which weigh five pounds, and he's gonna have. What else is he gonna have? Hmm. What else does he have on him? He has... He's... Well, no, you don't have to... You don't have to describe all his stuff. What, what else would he carry on him? He's too prim and proper to sleep outdoors. I should start with like 150 gold, because he comes from a good family. Doesn't sleep outdoors. Doesn't... You know, he just travels from place to place. Um, doesn't have rope or... You know, he's too much of a pretty boy and too into himself to actually carry anything else, like anyone else's shit. He can't be bothered. In fact, I think I should switch his strength and athletics. I don't think he should have high strength. 
I think we can give you 14 strength, 16 athletics. He's too much of a pretty boy. 16 athletics gives you movement speed. 8, 21, 2. And 14 strength brings you down to 0, 2, 9, 5. Whoops. 9, 5, and 55, 275, 330, which means 55, 110, 165, 220, 275. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, D8 slash D12, type is slashing. Okay, knife, zero plus one, d3 slash d2, type piercing, speed, two, sweet. Okay, proficiencies will be singing, which is a charisma check, 15. What other proficiencies does this pretty boy have? Um, fuck it, we're not gonna do long, so we're gonna do rape here. What's the rape here stats? I don't remember rape here off the top of my head. So uncommon to be used. D6 slash D8 for damage. Speed is four. Weight is still four. It's piercing, uh, but because of his bonus to speed, it's only three. And this is specialized weapon. Age, he's a young elf, he's 85, right-handed, speaks common, elven, and dwar dwarven. self-absorbed and narcissistic narcissistic self-absorbed and narcissistic um, loves to chase girls and is not fond of doing any work comes from a wealthy family and has always had his needs taken care of, of, of. Um, cool. So that's him. I think there's, I think we're pretty much done. Uh, with this guy, right? Yeah. Now we're going to do the opposite. The, like, complete and utter opposite character. Um, no, he learned the Dwarven because he was from a wealthy family and was expected of someone of his stature, you know? That's, what, that's just what you do. He actually kind of looks down on Dwarves. Well, you clue. Um, 
All right, so this is plus one, plus three. Critical hit adjust is eight, four. This hold is 65, 325, whoa. 325, 390, yeah. Dodge is plus two, zero, zero. Athletics, 6, 12, zero. Endurance, D, 10, zero, zero, minus 11. Uh, zero, 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 I think that's 10. Yeah. Morale bonus for charisma is minus one, zero, and perception is 10, five, zero. Okay, so I, you're gonna be human. We have too many humans at the party. We need to add some more non-humans. Fighter, alignment, doesn't matter. Hair is, um, black and short. Eyes are brown. Height is 5'11". Weight is 160. Level one, zero XP, 2,000 to get to the next level. Weapons, he's gonna use, what is he gonna use for weapons? I don't wanna, longsword is such a common weapon, but the barbarian had a battle ax. Actually, no one else has used swords. This guy's got a rapier. This guy should have your standard like longsword. So no, oh, well, he gets plus one to damage because he's a fighter. D8 slash D12. Actually, he gets a plus two to damage total. One for his strength, one for his uh, being a fighter. Type is slashing, speed is five. His other weapon he uses will be a... Short bow, which does d6. Type is piercing, it actually does d6 slash d6. Speed is four. Um, two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, okay, cool. He's got 16 arrows for his bow. Um, maybe we should have like a short sword as like a small fast weapon. Because I want this guy to be the variable, um, like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Oh, he needs to be able to, like, fuck up guys in armor. Well, he's got a long sword. He should also have a, a short sword. Which says D6 slash D8. And it is piercing, and it is speed three. Yeah, speed three. Okay. So, um, Let's throw some daggers up here. Uh, 
natural AC is zero, 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 five. Oh, natural AC is 10, I'm sorry. 15 total. Um, what is the HP for armor? HP for chainmail is 100. You absorb three, you've taken zero damage. Medium, oh, chain. Sweet. Encumbrance is 65, right? 65, 130, 195, 260, I believe, and then 325. Yes, I can do math on stream without worrying about it. Um, HP is 9. Well done. Uh, melee, zero, zero. Oh, no, you know what? I think you get... I think in this system, everyone gets their level to, yeah. Cool. Um, so chain mail, long sword, short sword, bow, daggers. What does the, what were the classes? There's something special though. Minus talent encumbrance from weapons and armor, minus 10 pounds. Um, he also will carry uh, clothes, which are five pounds. He's got his rope, silk, x25 feet, which is weighs four pounds. And he's got cooking stuff, which weighs eight pounds and bedroll, which weighs five pounds and a tent, which weighs five pounds. So let's add all that up. Seventy-seven pounds, which just barely puts him over encumbrance. Okay, so let's cut him out with the cooking shit. No, let's keep the cooking shit. Damn it. Let's get rid of the tent. So the total weight is actually um, 72 pounds, but since he's a fighter, he only actually has to worry about 62 pounds of that because 10 of that is taken up by the weapons and armor. So he can carry less. Yeah, that's the, the non... So specialized fighters get... At level one, get a minus one to initiative with their specialized weapon, while the soldier fighter um, gets a bonus of you know ten extra pounds he can carry from weapons or armor without before he's encumbered. So, yeah. Oh, does he use a shield? No, he doesn't use a shield. He might use a shield later. For now, he's fine. Actually, I think he should use a shield. He should totally use a shield. Yeah, let's. Fuck off with that stuff. Um, medium shield weighs five pounds, which will give him a plus one bonus here, which will bring this to 16. Uh, he's going to be right handed. He'll be 23 years old, common, and Pigeon between common and oh. I'll speak merc pigeon mercenary pigeon. For those of you that don't know, pigeon is like a hobnob language. That's not actually a real language. It doesn't have a lot of grammatical structure. It's where people from different parts from, who speak different languages in like trade towns or areas where lots of different languages would come together. It's kind of a, a mishmash where everyone knows a few words of these different languages and they all kind of like roughly communicate together by, you know, saying, oh, you know, using various combinations of 
words from different languages. So that's what pigeon is. It's a real thing. We're going to give this guy Merc Pigeon. So do they kind of like the generic, you know, in mercenary camps where people don't really know each other's languages. You might have like an orc and a dwarf and a human and an elf and they everyone just kind of like, bleh. It's actually interesting thinking about Pigeon is in the Caribbean and parts of South America, there was like this language, like this Pigeon language that developed there where everyone was, you know, from the trading between all the different regions. Um, and in one generation, it went from just being like mishmash pigeon to like a fully developed language on its own. And that's because when the children, the children learned pigeon from their parents, right? And that's like what everyone started was speaking. And the way that, you know, our brains are set up is that when the kids started learning pigeon, they actually added their own grammar and sentence structure. So the parents were speaking this like mishmash of other stuff. Like they'd speak real languages, but they'd also like, you know, communicate with this mishmash of other crap. But in these strange towns, a real language developed with full grammar and sentence structures um, just because our brains need that and like that. And so when the kids learn, grew up speaking pidgin, they just like built their own grammar to it. And so you had like a language develop specifically, you know, that the kids just learned together. They created it together as they grew up. Anyway, doesn't matter. You got it. Who cares? Um, Yeah, see, you guys fucking know what I'm talking about. Where was I before? I've I lost myself. Ah, here we go. Um, I need to retally all my weights now. Sixty nine minus ten becomes fifty nine. And let's give him actually a shield proficient. Well, let's get rid of the dagger proficiency. No, let's keep the dagger and give him a shield. Uh, which will increase his AC by another one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bring that up to 17. Cool. And let's do his resistances. Mm. Right, mental AC, mental AC 10, yeah. Uh, and you're not going to have a lot of money. You're going to have like 32 gold, which is decent, but, you know, not a ton. Excellent. Um, and we need a name for this guy. A name that kind of reflects his dour demeanor. Um, what's a name that reflects a dour demeanor? You guys don't have noticed I'm not taking names from chat. In fact, I don't even have chat up right now. It's blocked by other things. Um, did I already use that name? Did I already use Gareth? I like Gareth. I have a feeling I actually already used that. No, we had Fergus and Vulog and Liliana. No. Hold on. All right. Gareth, Halfred, Guy, Liliana, Vulog, Fergus. We're missing someone. We're missing the dwarf. 
Who's a thief? And Brock. Okay, cool. So we can use Gareth. We haven't used Gareth yet. So his name is Gareth. It's kind of a, a depressing name. Yeah, Gareth. Spelled that way, it looks more dour. Um, excellent. Oh, I see people timed out. Timed out people, were you being rude? Or were you just spelling my name wrong? Think about what you've done for hopefully the short timeouts you were given. Um, cool. So that's that. Oh, backstory. Um, backstory. In fact, we should give him less money then. He'll have 2.1 gold. He's given the rest of it back to his family. Um, All right, so these two are clearly at complete odds. They're both fighters, but we got the one pretty boy elf who just, you know, lives carefree, just chases girls, doesn't give a fuck. He's got a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. We got the other guy who, in fact, we'll make him younger. Make him 21. Um, we got the other guy who's had just a really fucking hard life. Never had any money. His family's always been, you know, screwed over. Um, and he's, like, doing whatever he can to get by. And he's only, like, slightly paranoid. No, I didn't even put that in. You know, he's, like, a little bit on the twitchy, I, I need to do my job and get paid. I don't give a fuck about anyone else. I'm just here to do what I need to do. Doesn't mean he won't like make friends. Like he could make friends and start caring about them. But in general, he's like, I'm here to do what I need to do so I can get by. 
Um, and then we have the other guy who's just like, whatever, dude. I don't even give a fuck about the money. I'm just going to go out chase after her. And these two must like hate each other. But they work together because the elf, it's beneath him to even argue with the human. He's like, whatever, dude. I don't give a fuck. And the human, you know, fuck the elf. I don't give a shit about him. If he's going to help, fine. If he's not going to help, fine. I don't care. So they kind of like dislike each other, but they they're both so caught up in their own shit that they don't even, you know, they they wouldn't turn on each other because they don't care about each other. Like they have complete disinterest. No reason to ch- to to fight amongst each other, but no reason to like work together other than other people. So I think this will be an interesting combination. Um and on that note, I think I'm going to send these out to the one-shots people. Okay. So Virgil will get Virgil gets the cleric. Robert gets the fighter. Greg gets the ranger. Wade gets the specialized fighter. And the name I can't pronounce gets the wizard. Cool. So I think we're done for today, guys. Um, uh, I think we're we've done everything we need to do, and that's it. I will tomorrow do a follow up for the what happens today in the campaign. So if you guys, I'll, I'll just you know, I'll give an announcement a few minutes before I do it, and then it'll be a short like two minute recap but I'll post it. It'll be on Twitch and it'll be on YouTube. So you can follow it there. If you guys are interested in what happens with the, the crazy stuff. Other than that, tomorrow is misclicks, which I think is actually misclicks has been having a rough time. If you guys have been watching it, it's kind of not been going super well, but I think, I think tomorrow is going to be a lot better. I think we've kind of turned a corner and combat sped up a lot. And we're finally at a point where, everything will be a little bit smoother. So that's tomorrow, and then Wednesday is Mafia, and then Thursday is One Shots. And as always, if you have any romantic questions, if you're having problems with love, send me an email at koibuatriogoblins.com, and we'll figure that out. We'll solve your romantic problems. We'll debug romance on Love Bites. See you guys some